Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co, and today I want to have a bit of a conversation as to why I'll spend $400 on this, but not so much on this. If you're not aware of what's going on, over on GameFound, Lucky Duck currently has a campaign running for a deluxified version of Food Chain Magnet. It's a whole deluxe version of Food Chain Magnet with a base price of like $175, roughly, I think it's like €169, Euro, which is $175, and then an all-in that will run you anywhere from $300 to $400, depending on your shipping, your VAT, and whether you get both the expansion and the base game or not, which is a lot of money. And I've seen reasonably, reasonably there have been conversations around both people who are upset about the pricing, people who are looking forward to getting the game and now aren't, and then there are also conversations around, hey, people will go out and spend this much money or more on giant over-the-top miniatures games, and Food Chain Magnet, as one of the best games of all time, should certainly be worth that much money. And I'm not here to debate that. I'm not here to debate that at all. What I am here to say is to say to, for me personally, on me, on a personal level, why to me, I don't feel this is worth $400, despite loving this game. I love Food Chain Magnet. I am the target audience for this campaign. The, you know, spending lots of money on an over-the-top, deluxified Kickstarter game, that is very much the target audience. I'm in that target audience, and you combine the fact that I think Food Chain Magnet is one of the best games out there in existence, and yet I'm still not backing it. Versus, you know, throw another... Zombicide my way, and I do go all in that. And yes, I know, I like come on games, I like Zombicide in particular, but it's not just Zombicide. I spent that much money on The Witcher, I spent that much money on, I don't know, Too Many Bones or more, on Vindication Unsettled. There are so many game experiences out there that I've spent $400 on, and to me, Food Chain Magnet isn't, isn't something I'm willing to consider at that price point. Now, to be very clear on multiple levels before we get into this, first of all, I'm going to be bringing you seven reasons. Second of all, as those reasons are to some extent personal to me, you might have your own reasons, or you may already be backing this, or you think anyone who spends $400 on any game is crazy. Those are all possible. I'll also say that this is not a dig at Lucky Duck at all. I talked about this a little bit already in my Week in Review last week. I went into it a bit in the topic of the week. I wasn't planning on doing a full video, but I actually appreciate the fact that there are a lot of people who have the question of why is this something people will buy, and this seems over the top. And I wanted to dive into that, which is why I'm doing this video. But I'm not, this is not a dig at Lucky Duck. I wish Lucky Duck all the best. I think they are a fantastic company doing fantastic things. And I think this is included in the things that they are doing that are, well, frankly, fantastic. There are reasons why it's not worth it to me. That has nothing to do with whether it should or shouldn't cost that much. It's just to do with my own backing experiences, trying to come at it from the sense of, if you are one of those people who wonders, why is this too expensive for some people and this not so much? I'm just going to give you my seven reasons as to why that is for me. And starting off with number one, starting off with number one is going to be the base pledge threshold. Now, to be clear, this is not always the same across the... Every campaign you go to is going to have a different base pledge threshold. But starting off with the food chain magnet over here, your base pledge before shipping is going to be $175 just to even be in the conversation. Where you contrast it with, you know, currently DC's the Zombicide game is currently going for $130, and that's one of the more expensive command base pledges. Usually a command based pledge for the miniatures all in is usually in the $90 to $100 range and they've slowly been creeping up a little bit so they have been getting more expensive but even one of the more expensive licensed IP ones is coming in at $130 which is already cheaper and the sheer amount of content you're going to get for that is more. You're getting more content for that. The base pledge threshold is a big deal. We've seen things like this with, uh, you know, Elder Scrolls. We've seen things like this with Primal. Whenever you have a base pledge that, uh, that hovers closer to that $200 range just to give you access to it, it does scare a lot of people away. Like it or not, there are a lot of people who will jump in at that $100 range, and those people will even sit there and say, you know what, and I'll get this, and I'll get this, and I'll get that. And so by the time they're spending $200, they get the sense and the feeling that they are getting a bunch of stuff for that. They're not just getting the base pledge. They've chosen to add this and add that, and they're getting these four boxes here. And so even if they do spend $200, the base intro pledge at $175 is a, is a mental blocker on games that most campaigns try not to hit that as the base pledge. Again, some do. Primal did. Elder Scrolls of, of um, um, Chip Theory Games did. So there are campaigns that I've done in the past, but generally when that happens, there's always a degree of pushback of you're not even giving me access to your game unless I spend $175, which is always a tough pill to swallow for those who mentally think of crowdfunding as $100 being already expensive and $200 is just, well, it's a lot of money. So the first reason I have is the base pledge threshold. I'll also say this one is a little less personal to me. I'm not as scared off by a base pledge threshold of $175. I, to me, it's a lot more of the other factors that determine whether it's worth it or not, but the base pledge threshold on its own, a little bit less to me. Although where it does combine 
is that perception of value. The perception of value, that twice the content aspect, when you're looking at you know what you got for Elder Scrolls, when you're looking at what you got for, for Primal, when you're looking at a $130 pledge from Command where you're gonna show up with two giant boxes, the core box, and then the full giant box, then you're like, well, yeah, you'll get that much with Food Chain Magnet, if you buy both, if you're at the $300 level. That $130 level gets you a lot more with a DC Zombicide game or whatever it is out there. And so that perception of value is a big factor. It's not just the 175, it's the how much content are you getting. Now, Lucky Duck Games recently, as the time of the filming, they've put out a few updates around the cost. They've talked about things they're looking into. In fact, by the time you watch this video, they may have some suggestions or alternatives as to what they're doing to give you other options. But they've talked about different factors of the price, some of which I've talked about already. In fact, I think I've talked about most of them. The number of unique sculpts they have, uh, the fact that they have to price compare against Splatter's game, which is already expensive. There are a bunch of things that go into why, they, why the reasons why this game costs as much as it does, and I think those are all valid reasons. But perception of value is still a conversation, and when you're looking at what you get for $200, when you're looking at what you get for that $350 to $400 all-in you'll be paying for, when you're looking at what you get in different campaigns, you're just getting less here. Perceptionally. Not necessarily actually. Those sculpt costs, those moldings, the fact that they're preparing for an only a crowdfunding run and they're not going to have a retail release and they have to factor those things into the cost and how it distributes, those are all factors as to why it has to cost what it has to cost. None of those are factors in the perception of value that the person backing the campaign has. And so perception of value is such a huge conversation, a huge part of this. And to me, it's one of the reasons why I will happily consider multiple zombicides but I'm a little bit more hesitant to go ahead and dive into Food Chain Magnet at that price point. Cost versus other options is another factor. And this is where you'll be all over the spectrum of different campaigns, different games, of what they do, what they bring to the table. But the cost over here, again, that $175 plus shipping is the entry level threshold to get your hands on Food Chain Magnet. Versus the other options on the table. If you want to play Food Chain Magnet, you know you can do. On a regular basis, it's available for around $90, shipping included. So it's going to run you around $190 or so to get the deluxe version. But you can pay half that or less in order to be able to go ahead and get your hands on the basic version of Food Chain Magnet on a regular basis. And to make matters worse, at the time the campaign is running, at the time that, that, that Lucky Duck Games is running their Food Chain Magnet campaign, Splatter currently has on sale at pre-order pricing for $67. Again, let's see factor euros, $2 and all that. For around $67 compared to the 190 you'll be spending on the campaign. Meaning, on a regular basis, it's nearly two times the price, if not more, and currently in the moment, Splotted chose a great time to give a great deal to all their customers, but that great deal comes at the cost of the perception of value of the Lucky Duck campaign. You can spend $190 to play Food Chain Magnet, the base game, forget the expansions, or you could pay $67. And when you're looking at that, that, that cost versus other options is another conversation. You know what your other options are? to play uh, DCs, the Zombicide game, versus, and I keep using DCs as a reference just because those are two active, large campaigns going on at the same time. I could use Nemesis Retaliation just as much, or any of these other game systems I just happen to be focusing on Command at the moment, because I think when people think of, you know, big box miniatures, luxifications, Command does come very much to mind. But if you're looking at DCs, if you're looking at DCs, getting your hands on that, your options are getting it for $130 for the base pledge on crowdfunding, or spending around $70, $80 or so at retail, and getting so much of the content stripped away. For all that I love Command's games, I think sometimes their retail offerings are great. Cthulhu Let's May Die is a good example. You'll get a great game out of that. And I think sometimes their retail offerings have a lot to be desired, and their Zombicide games very much fall into that category. So when you're looking at your options, your options are paying 60 to 70 to get a, not even 60 to 70, 70 to 80 to get a stripped down version of Zombicide, doesn't have nearly as much content, or $130 to get tons and tons of content for the game. Versus when you're looking at Food Chain Magnet, you currently have to pay three times the price, and you're getting deluxifications, but not any gameplay content changed. Which means that cost versus other options is another conversation. If you want to play, play, play Food Chain Magnet, you should. But you can do so for $67 and not $190, so you have options on the table. Again, I think it's a fantastic game. You should go buy this. If Splatter designed this entire conversation to drive sales to them because people are upset with the Lucky Duck pricing, I'm sure it's working. It really, the fact, I mean, the fact that they, they lower their pricing, the fact that they drop their pricing doing the campaign where there's pushback around the pricing on this, it's not great. It's not great. So yeah. Cost versus other options is always going to be part of the conversations, and right now, the cost on the table makes the other options look much more appealing than they normally would. Somebody who would have been scared by that $67 on a spotter game right now, well, it's looking like a great price at the moment. 
A fourth one that I think that's very relevant to the conversation, a fourth reason, and this is one of those that's a little bit illogical, but it's still a reason that comes into play. Logical or not, human emotions are human emotions and they are victim to so many things. And this one is sticker shock. At the end of the day, fair or not, the current market of crowdfunding games generally does not have people paying $400 for your game. And when I say generally, I mean that I think I can say with confidence that right now, Food Chain Magnet over on uh, GameFound on the Lucky Duck campaign is the most expensive Euro game that we have ever seen in the board game space. Past possible one-off, you know, handcraft, I don't know. But if you look at anything that has any degree of, of, of recognition or, or, or being known in any way, shape, or form, this is the most expensive Euro game offering ever been created that isn't some handcrafted Etsy version of whatever. Find whatever you want, whether it's a, you know, Small World Deluxe, whether it's, you know, I don't know, uh, no, Darwin's Journey. I, haven't, I, can't, I can't think of comparisons because there aren't comparisons that cost this much in the Euro space. Versus, unfortunately, there are plenty of comparisons of, you know, games that will run you $400 in the big box miniature game space. Anything from Storm Sunder to Madara to, to the next, you know, Command Campaign to getting all three sets of Nemesis, whatever you want. There's so much out there that does support the price point around big box miniature games being in that range and Euro games being nowhere close to that range. I think a big part of this is Sticker Shock. I think Lucky Duck Games could have, and this is all hindsight, it's impossible to talk about, but I think Lucky Duck Games could have and should have set the groundwork, <clears throat> sorry, set the groundwork to let people know that this was going to be expensive. There's always a, a, a toss up there because you can scare people away before you can scare people away when they come to the page. But I think had the groundwork been set, had they been like, we're going to make the coolest, best version of this game ever, but also it's kind of going to be expensive. I don't know the best way to market that. But I think this sticker shock threw so many people into a, how could this possibly be worth it? Even when you sit there and compare, hey, by the way, I'm getting my third Zombicide, I could get that, or I can get a deluxified version of one of the best games ever. When you put it that way, there is a kind of a more of a equivalence. Like, you know, maybe, maybe it's not that crazy. Maybe it's not that expensive. But you have to get over that mental hurdle of never having ever thought to yourself that that would be a price point here compared to kind of being used to it over here. And so that sticker shock and what people are used to is going to be a big factor in what people are willing to pay. When you're thrown off, when you're surprised, when you're caught off guard, when you jump to that campaign, you're excited to back now, and you suddenly realize that your mental model of, you know, maybe it's going to be $250, maybe, I don't know, and you're paying more, well more than what you thought is the most expensive reasonable price that does throw people into, well, sticker shock. It's called sticker shock for a reason because it's exactly that. It's sticker shock on the pricing of the game. Number five, reason number five, and this one I talked about already in my week in review, is the idea of that initial investment loss. When I sit there and I go ahead and back, you know, I don't know, the new retaliation campaign, Nemesis Retaliation, when I sit there and I back the next DC's game or the next Zombicide system, there's no initial investment loss. You know, I have Marvel Zombies and I have DC's. I have something else in addition to the system. Most of the time when I go all in on any big box campaign, you're not losing something you already had. A notable example, a notable counterexample, this would be Count Castle of Burgundy. Castle of Burgundy from Wake and Realms, Wake and Realms, when you went ahead and bought that deluxe version of the game, you had a game that was no longer useful because you have Castle of Burgundy, and then you have the deluxe version. Your original Castle of Burgundy, you can gift it, you can trade it, you can sell it, but in some way, you're looking at getting rid of something that you already spent $40, $50 on. And so there is a degree of loss. There's a degree of, I already have the thing that I'm upgrading. I already have. I'm not buying an upgrade kit. I'm buying an entirely new version of the thing. And buying entirely new version of things, when you have, when your monitor, when your screen monitor breaks and you need to buy a new one, it's easy to go ahead and upgrade to whatever you want. But when you have a perfectly good functioning monitor and you need to buy a new one, there's always a little bit of more hesitancy of, do I really need to spend $300 when the one I have already does the job? Most of the time, when you spend $400 on a campaign, the one you currently have already does the job. And to the point that one of the things you do see a lot of pushback on crowdfunding is when they are selling new versions of a thing you already have, there's usually a ton of pushback because people don't like that. If you think the pushback on Fuji Magnus is bad, I mean, do you remember the pushback on Gloomhaven in a second edition? The amount of people upset that they were releasing a second edition when you already have the first edition that was no longer as good and they wanted upgrade kits? This is a regular common conversation in crowdfunding where backers want to not spend all that money again. It's not even about the price sometimes. It's about the fact that you have something that already works and now you're offering something different and I, I the thing I have is no longer useful. 
That, that aspect of the initial investment loss is a big part of the framing of the conversation. When you spend $400 on the DCs all in, DCs all in, I'll say DCs. When you spend $400 on the DCs all in, you are not losing anything on the table. But if you own Food Chain Magnet and the expansion, you're already $150 in the hole. And sure, you could sell them, you could trade them, you could gift them, you can do all those things. But that still represents time, effort, and energy, or gifting less time and effort, but again, then you're losing $150. And so there's something lost on the table that changes the conversation of whether this is worth $400 versus something else worth $400 that doesn't have that initial investment loss. A very personal reason, a very personal reason for me, is going to be reason number six which is just what I play and how often. I play Food Chain Magnet maybe twice a year. Maybe twice a year if I'm lucky, I pull it out and play it. I play Zombicide 10 to 20 times a year, if not more than that. And so for me, that $400 all in, to a large extent, it does come down to how often I play something. If I played Food Chain Magnet as often as I played Zombicide, I would be backing it. I would. All those other reasons would fall away because if I think a game is one of the best games ever, which I do, and I'm playing it on a regular basis, which I'm not, unfortunately, then I would go ahead and spend that extra amount of money to improve my experience. One of the reasons Castle of Burgundy was an easy decision for me is spending $300 to go all in on that. I don't remember exactly $300, but $280, whatever it was, all in on Castle of Burgundy. That was an easy conversation for a game I've played over 50 times this past year. And so when I love a game and I play it a lot, it makes it so much easier to justify that deluxification. Whether it's more content or better content, it makes it so much easier to just get that. For me, and this is a very personal reason, this comes down to the fact that Fuji Magnet, as great as an experience as it is, is a harder game for me to table. It's a harder game to pull out. It's a mental investment, and I don't table it as often as I'd like to. But that does mean that when I'm looking at that $400 price tag, I'm like, what is that? Like, you know, if I play this over the next four years, that's eight plays, that's $50 a play to deluxify the game. That's a lot of money to deluxify a game. It's just not worth it to me, at least not right now. And then the last reason, which I think is less personal, but more across the board. Reason number seven is thematic immersion matters so much more in Ameritrash games than in Euro games. This, I think, goes hand in hand with the fact that we don't see this level of price tag on Euro experiences, but we do left, right, and center on all these big box miniature games. You know, you try to pitch me on, on Marvel Zombies and you have the standee version or you have the miniature version. There are people who like standees, sure. For me, though, I want those miniatures. I want the horde of 3D zombies across the table slowly creeping towards you. I want all that improved luxation. I want the terrain kit. I want the upgrades. I want everything that makes this Euro experience as I roll dice and blast people out of existence. I want the feeling of thematic immersion that gets enhanced by a deluxe copy full of miniatures and full of luxification. I want that very much. You know what matters less to me? As much as I love it, Castle of Burgundy, it matters less to me. Castle of Burgundy is a great game in its basic version, and it's a great game in its deluxe version, but the difference of what it adds to me isn't the same as if I'm talking about a standee versus miniatures version of an Ameritrash experience. To me, Ameritrash experiences, whether it's a cooperative dungeon crawler, whether you're going head-to-head -head in a giant area control, when you have that sense of, of just danger and combat and rolling dice and taking people out and monsters and gods and all these things on the table, I think having those expensive versions adds more thematic immersion than the idea that you'll sit there and have over in Fuji Magnet over here. You'll have houses that are more 3D that you might have to squint a little harder to go ahead and see the numbers on the houses than you did before. If anything, sometimes these things can take away from the experience. I mean, Castle of Burgundy has been debated so much in so many ways as to whether the luxification is worth it or whether it gets in the way of the experience. That conversation is not nearly as present when you're talking about giant Ameritrash experiences. People usually more often are more naturally inclined towards what they offer and why they are worth it to the experience. And so I think that's another, for me, the final reason as to why this is an easier conversation than this. And those are my seven reasons. That's this, this, this video to me is specifically, it's not even about the cost of the game, it's about why some $400 games don't scare people away the same level or don't scare me away the same level, and some do. None of this is a critique on the price. I understand why the price is the way it is. I feel bad for Lucky Duck Games that they put themselves into, like, one thing they put in the update. They talked about this in a recent update, about how it crushed them to see people rating Food Chain Magnet a 1 because of this experience, because of this game, and they wanted to they wanted to do justice to one of the best games of all time. They wanted to make it as deluxified and enhanced as possible, and instead there was some degree, a, m a small degree, but some degree of pushback against the very existence of the game, and that it crushed them to, to kind of have this almost tribute to one of the best games of all time, and to have it a little bit in some degree backfire. I think that's that.
I think if you're watching this, if you're someone who's a target audience, whether or not this experience is something that's affordable for you, whether or not it's something that you were looking forward to and disappointed about or not, Food Chain Magnet is a fantastic game. There are many ways to try to experience it from a friend's copy, from a board game cafe, for getting it, you know, the cheaper splatter version. I can't believe I'm saying the words cheaper splatter version, but here we are. I'm not here to critique Lucky Duck on the price. I understand, ultimately to me, every price is the same conversation. It's either worth it to you or it isn't. Let your wallet decide and you can figure out whether something is the market will bear what the market will bear. We're talking about expensive board games here. This is, these are not necessities. These are not things anyone needs. These are luxury purchases being made by people who can afford to sit there and say, you know what? I want to drop hundreds of dollars on more Marvel United. I want to drop hundreds of dollars on a deluxified version of Food Chain Magnet. These are all luxury purchases. Back it or don't. Buy it or don't. Do what you want or not. But to me, this is a conversation as to why, why it's different. Why this $400 all-in is different than other games that have been more expensive in the past that haven't phased me as much. And in any case, until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.